I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. This is the FreeSky X-Lite transmitter. And yeah, I'm going to review it, but no, that's not what this video is about. Because before I can review it, I got to get it on the latest version of OpenTX so that I can use it with my R9 receiver. Oh yeah, I'm going to be reviewing that too. But what we're doing today is we're going to update the FreeSky X-Lite to the latest version of OpenTX. And then, you know, we'll do the rest of that stuff in another video. Stay tuned. If you just got your FreeSky X-Lite and you're itching to go fly with it, you may be asking yourself, do I really need to update my firmware? And the answer to that is, unfortunately, you probably ought to. You can just go fly with the firmware that came on it, but there have been some major improvements to OpenTX since the version that is on the X-Lite ship, shipping on the X-Lite. There have been some major improvements to OpenTX since then that you probably ought to go ahead and upgrade. And it's a little bit of a hassle, but better to get it out of the way right now when you've got a fresh, clean radio. You're not actually using it for anything. You don't have models on it. You got nothing to lose if anything gets a little screwed up and you have to back out again. So we're going to go through the steps. It's not too painful. We'll get it done and then we'll get through it together. We'll get to it. We'll get through it together. Now, if somehow you have never installed the STM32 virtual COM port driver on your machine, you're going to need to do that. If you have ever flashed a Betaflight flight controller, you probably already have this driver on your machine. So for most of you, you can go ahead and skip this step. But I wanted to include this just in case uh, it's one of those steps that you might be easy to overlook. And then somebody who's doing this for the very first time gets confused as to why things aren't working for them. So you need to go to this web page. And then, unfortunately, it's a real freaking hassle to get the software. STM makes it so crazy. You have to accept the license agreement and then you have to log in and register and make a login. And you could, it's a, I, this is such a hassle for so many people. I am hosting a version of this file on my personal OneDrive account. You can go ahead. There's a link in the video description. Just download the driver installer from there. And what you're going to do is this. Here I am in my downloads folder, and this is where I saved this file to. You might've saved it to downloads or to your desktop or wherever you saved it to. You're gonna to wanna to go to it and you'll double click it. And when you double click it, another window should appear. You should see these file contents. Your window may not look exactly like mine. I'm using a program called 7-Zip to manage my zip files. Uh, basically, you should see these files when you double click this zip file. Almost certainly your operating system or you'll have something that'll be able to handle it. And then you're going to want to grab one of these four uh, programs, depending on if you've got Windows 7 or Windows 8 or above. This is this W8 is for Windows 8 and Windows 10. And depending on if you've got a 32 or a 64-bit operating system, if you're not sure, you probably have a 64-bit operating system on most modern computers. But if you pick the wrong one, it'll give you an error when you try and run it and you'll just pick the other one. For those of you who are on Mac OS or uh, Linux, weirdos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. For those of you who are on a non-Windows operating system, you may be wondering, what about me? And the good news is, no, we haven't forgotten about you. Actually, your operating system just comes with these drivers pre-installed and you don't have to do any of this. Feel free to skip ahead in the video to the next section. Windows users, continue. So I'm going to drag this file out of the zip file and then I'm going to double click and run the executable to install the drivers. And the installer is going to run. I actually already have these drivers installed, so yours may not look exactly like mine. Mine's going to go pretty quickly, and it's going to basically say, hey, uh, you, see, you see mine's like, oh, hey, you've already got these drivers. What are you trying to do here? And I'm not trying to do anything. Just run the installer, finish the installation, and you should see this. ST Micro Electronics USB ready to use. Your drivers are now installed, and you can continue with this process. The next thing to do is to download OpenTX Companion. OpenTX Companion is an application that's used to manage your transmitter. You can use it to back up your models. You can use it to modify your models, but the most fundamental thing we're gonna use it for is to update the firmware on the radio. We'll download that from this web page here. And what you're gonna to wanna to do if you've got the x Lite is you're gonna need OpenTX 222 or newer. 222 actually was not even released at the time that the X-Lite came out, but the earlier versions don't support the X-Lite at all. At the time of this video, you can see that OpenTX 222 is in release candidate. That's what this RC2345 means. 
by the time you're watching this video, OpenTX222 might actually be out and you'll just see OpenTX222. If you see release candidates, pick the latest one, the newest one. If you just see OpenTX222, pick that. I'm going to download OpenTX222 release candidate 5, which is the most recent one at the time of this uh, video recording. And I'm going to download here down at the bottom, I'm going to download two things. I'm going to download the installer. In my case, I'm going to download the Windows installer because I'm on Windows. There's also a Mac OS image. There's a Debian package and Ubuntu, PPA, whatever that is. I don't, I mean, don't, I'm, I use Windows mostly. So download the Windows installer. And that is an exe file. And I can just click right here or it'll be in the downloads folder if you let it go, if you get it, let it go there. We're going to run this installer. Leave everything at the defaults. And then as I finish, it'll give me the option to run OpenTX Companion 2.2, and we'll go ahead and do that. The other thing I'm going to need to do is download the SD card contents for 2.2.2, and I can do that by clicking here. And we want to look for the radio that we're using, and in this case, it is the Xlite. And now in the Xlite folder, I've got two subfolders, V22018 and 0016. Well, uh, 0018 is the newest one. If we look at the dates here, that's the latest one. So that's the one I'm going to grab and I'm going to download that. The next thing I want you to do is in OpenTX Companion, I want you to hit settings and settings, and we're going to set up our radio profile. And my radio profile is already set up because this is not the first time I did this. I rehearsed this a little bit before I went to record the video. And basically, you're going to name the radio. We'll just name it x Lite, And you're going to set the radio type to FreeSky Tyrannus x Lite. This is very, very important because if you don't do this, you will not get the right firmware for your radio and bad things can happen. The other thing I want you to do is I want you to check Lua, Lua C, and unless you fly collective pitch helicopters, which I'm going to guess that you don't if you're using an X-Lite, we'll, ch we'll check the no heli option. That gets rid of a couple of menu options that only collective pitch helicopters uh, use. Having done that, the next thing you're going to want to do is hit File, Download, and hit Download Firmware. And that will download the firmware that you need to flash to the radio to your hard drive. Uh, put that somewhere on your hard drive. I have a special folder that I've made for my Tyrannus for my OpenTX backups, but you can put this anywhere. You put it on your desktop, wherever you put it, just be able to find it again. Now it's time to flash the radio. And what we're going to do is with the radio turned off, we're going to plug USB in on the bottom of the radio. Nothing will appear to happen. You may see a notification on your computer that new hardware has been detected. And at this point, you're almost but not quite ready to flash the radio. The one more step that Windows users need to use is to download the Impulse RC driver fixer. And you can get that from this page, impulserc.com slash pages slash downloads, link in the video description, or you can just Google search for Impulse RC driver fixer. This is an app that if you work with Betaflight flight controllers or OpenTX transmitters, you're going to use this app all the time. Download it, put it somewhere on your, on your hard drive where you can get at it regularly. Uh, you're going to use it a lot. And what you're going to do is when you download it, you're just going to run the Impulse RC driver fixer with after you plugged in the radio with the power turned off, run the Impulse RC driver fixer. And what you should see is this, searching for flight controller, followed by installing DFU driver, and then it should say, driver fixed. And at that point, you are ready to flash the radio. Again, if you use Mac OS or Linux, you do not need to do the Impulse RC driver fixer. Your operating system should work right out of the box. Now, if you get an error message at that point, like an error message that some people commonly get is too many DFU devices found. What you got to do is there's something else plugged into your computer that also uses the STM32 drivers. They're actually pretty common in all kinds of devices. And it, it, the, the driver fixer is confused about which device you mean to flash. So you got to unplug all the stuff from your computer. It's kind of annoying. And then eventually you figure out which one is causing the problem and then you can flash the radio. The other thing I've seen is that sometimes if you're using a USB hub, plugging directly into the computer will fix the too many DFU devices. Unfortunately, that's an error message. It's a little hard to say exactly what's causing it or what's to fix it, but those are the suggested courses of action. Okay, the radio is plugged 
into the USB with the power turned off and we've fixed the drivers for Windows. The next, the next thing we're going to do is read write and write firmware to radio. At this point, I'm assuming you have a fresh brand new radio with no models on it. If you actually are doing this like with on a radio, you've got models and stuff on, you should read models and settings from radio and save those out. And maybe you also want to back up radio to file. But we're just going to go ahead and write the firmware, assuming this is a fresh radio. Here's the firmware that we selected before. And we're just going to say write to TX. And we've got the error message. Oh, beautiful. More than one DFU capable device found. Ah, beautiful. Hey, see, now I'm plugged into a USB hub and I'm going to unplug and I'm going to plug straight into the front of the computer. Well, see, it worked. There you go. What are you going to do? This is what it looks like when it works. This will happen for a little while and then it'll finish and then we'll have the latest firmware on there. Fantastic. At this point, the flashing firmware has finished. You may see warning file has no DFU suffix and worry. Don't worry. It always says that it doesn't mean anything. You're fine. The last thing to do is to put the SD card contents on the SD card for the radio and you can do that using the usb port on the radio but it's actually it's kind of slow the easiest and it's so easy on the x light to get the sd card it's just right there in the bottom the easiest thing to do is to pop this sd card out just use an sd card reader it's much faster uh, we'll go ahead and do that right now so i have a, a blank sd card and in fact what i can do is i can do right click format and format this as fat 32 and we'll name it uh, X light SD doesn't matter what you name it, but we'll go ahead and format that. Okay. Now it's empty. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the downloads folder where we downloaded the SD card contents. See this SD card, Tyrannus, etc. We're going to extract all, all the contents from that onto the SD card. So again, I'm going to double click that. It's going to bring up this window, which shows me the SD card or the contents of that zip file. And then here is the x -Lite SD card in my card reader. And I'm just going to take all of this stuff from the zip file and I'm going to drag it over to the, uh, to the SD card. And you see how fast that's going? It's way faster than if I had done it using the, uh, using the USB interface on the x -Lite. At this point, you're basically ready to go, but there's a couple other things I want to suggest you do before you continue. And one of them is to download the Amber sound pack to your SD card. The Amber sound pack, it's the voices that you hear when the radio talks to you and it sounds much nicer uh, than the default sound pack that's in there. Um, the other thing I wanna walk you through is installing the Betaflight Lua scripts, which allow you to change PIDs, rates, your video transmitter settings, all that stuff from the radio and they're really handy to have and maybe you'll never use them, but if you ever do wanna use them, this is the time to set them up while you get your SD card all ready to go. The Amber sound pack can be grabbed from this page. It's this file right here. This is an archive like a zip file, but it's actually a different kind of archive called a RAR file, R-A-R. And unfortunately, Windows at least does not handle RAR files by default. You will need to download a tool like 7-Zip is the one I suggest. 7-Zip, you can, under Windows, you can download that and it will allow you to access RAR files. If you're running Mac OS or Linux, I don't know what to tell you, but you're going to grab the Amber RAR file. And here on your SD card, you've got a sounds folder. And basically, here's English. Amber is only in English. Well, what I want you to do is I want you to just take your existing English and name it, rename it, en.old. I like to do that just to save in case I ever want to go back. Um, so I'll just right click, rename, en.old. And then I'm going to take this en sounds file from the Amber pack and I'm going to drag it over to my SD card. And it's basically going to replace the en file that I renamed. And that's going to change my English voice from the default to Amber, which is much nicer. So you listen. Aileron medium. Isn't that pleasant? Don't you like that? Versus. Landing mode on. Eh. I like Amber better. Maybe I'm just used to her. To install the Betaflight Lua scripts, go to this page. As always, link in the video description. There's going to be a ton of links down there. <laughs> to install the Betaflight Lua script, go to this page, and we're going to download 
BFTX Lua 102. That's the most recent version at the time that I'm making this video, but grab whatever the latest is here on the releases page. We'll open up that zip file. Here is the zip file on the left and the SD card on the right. And you'll see here is BF and scripts. And basically all you have to do is right here, here's a zip file and you see we got the scripts folder here. Don't go into that, don't do anything, but while you're looking at the root directory of this of the SD card, just drag BF and scripts over from the zip file onto your SD card and that will put all the necessary files where they need to go. So you'll have a BF folder with BF.lua and BF.lua C in it. And here in scripts, you'll have a BF folder with all of this stuff in it. Now a full video on how to set up this radio would be, it would be 27 videos and 18 hours long because this is a very feature rich video. But, oh, <laughs> well, Amber's working, that's good. But I do wanna show you how to set just one more thing that pertains to what we did in this video, how to get the Lua script working right. Um, because just putting those files in the SD card isn't quite enough to access the Lua script. What you're gonna to wanna to do is, well, power the radio on and then hold this joystick to the right to enter the model, uh, to enter the menu system. And then press to the left one time and you'll get to the display menu here. You're gonna press down and it'll highlight none. And you'll press click once and it'll start flashing. And then press up until you see script. Click once, press to the right click once and you should see BF here, which is the Betaflight Lua script, which you installed on, on the SD card. If you don't see that, then when you dump those files on the SD card, something didn't go right. Having done that, we can now back out, hitting the exit button here till we're back at the screen. And if we hold down on the joystick, this is the Betaflight Lua script. You are running the Betaflight Lua script. Nothing's happening because we're not actually connected to a quad, but this will verify that the Lua script is running. And if you want to learn more about the Lua script, I have a whole video on setting up and using the Betaflight Lua scripts, which I will link to in the video description. You've already set it up, but that video discusses how to actually use it. Well, there you go. Now you've got the latest and greatest firmware on your FreeSky X-Lite radio. You've installed the Betaflight Lua scripts. If may not even know what those do, but hey, you got them. And you've installed the Amber sound pack. Oh, Amber. Oh, Amber. I love you, Amber. Well, that's going to do it for this video. I'm going to go be alone with Amber. <laughs> Happy flying. <laughs>